Ready to go? I think yes. Yes, yes. Uh, Namaskar, a very good morning to you all and uh, a very warm welcome to our session 21st of season two virtual Ayurvedic uh, speaker series, uh, Pharmacological Therapeutic Effects of Ayurveda and today's uh, special session on Anu Tela. And uh, this, this particular, uh, I think, formulation became so famous during COVID and uh, almost every one of us has been using that. And uh, we have a very special speaker, Dr. Sudhira. Uh, welcome, Dr. Sudhira. And uh, Professor you, KSR Prasad. Very wa welcome, warm welcome, sir. Thank you for joining all the way from Barwala and all the way from uh, Kotaka. And uh, we are expecting, I think, our special guest today, Dr. C. Bernard. He will be joining us shortly. And uh, we're looking forward to... Uh, very exciting uh, presentation today, and uh, this formulation is being used, I think, in every household, and looking forward to uh, presentation today. Uh, Dr. Verma, over to you. Thank you, CG. Thank you very much, sir. <clears throat> Namaskar, good morning, friends from Toronto, and welcome to 20th, 21st session of virtual lecture series on pharmacological and therapeutic effects of top 75 traditional Ayurvedic medicines. Friends, we are running this virtual lecture series from Canada with the support of Canada India Foundation Toronto, Consulate General of India in Toronto, American Association of Ayurvedic Professionals, USA, Ayurveda Union of Midwest, USA, Association of Ayurveda Academy, UK, European Ayurveda Association, Germany, International Ayurveda League, Mumbai, Tatha Astu Magazine, USA, and our media partners in Europe, UK, Canada, and US. Today's topic is pharmacological and therapeutic effects of Anutel. Anutel is a traditional Ayurvedic medicine commonly used for Nasya Karma. Nasya Karma is an Ayurvedic procedure. Dr. Prasad is with us. He will let us know the details of Nasya Karma. And Anutel is used for various disorders of uh, uh, sinus, uh, like sinusitis, rhinitis, facial paralysis, migraine, tremors, and the research has shown it is also effective in mycosis. And it is also useful in COVID. It was recommended by Ayush Department for prevention of COVID also. So today we have two experts. We have with us Dr. Sudhira, who is MD, PhD in Ayurveda. She is working as an associate professor in Department of Rash Shastra and Bhashajya Kalpana at VPSV Ayurveda College Kotakal in India. She has published many research articles in peer reviewed journals and presented many research papers at different international and national seminars. In field of research, she has done clinical evaluation of Shirvala Tela with Sahacharadi Kauth in management of Shiatika. Welcome Dr. Sudhira. And friends, we yes. have Another expert, a well-known personality in the field of Panch Karma, Dr. K.S.R. Prashad, who is MD, PhD in Ayurveda, presently is working as principal of National College of Ayurveda and Hospital in Barwala in Haryana. Previously, he worked as professor and head of, head of Panch Karma department at Sri Jagat Guru Gavi Siddheshwar Ayurvedic Medical College and Hospital. He has a very long biodata. So welcome, Dr. Prashadji. Welcome. Thank you. So our both experts will enlighten us about the pharmacological and therapeutic effects of Anutela, and they will also share their experience with Anutela. We have one special guest, Dr. Bernard Kolako. He is a scientist of modern medicine, and earlier he was NHS consultant at Middlesex Hospital in UK. 
we will learn from him how modern science and ancient system of medicine ayurveda can be integrated in modern modern times and how we can get the benefit of integration of modern and ancient sciences so and we have dr madan thanga veluji with us he is a genome scientist from uk today he will moderate the technical session so without wasting any time further i would like to invite dr madan thanga veluji to moderate the session over to dr madan thanga veluji harishi thank you uh, satish ji namaskar thank you namaskar. for bringing us all together once again on the 21st session of the event of our traditional ayurvedic medicine series and we are very fortunate to be to have two very very learned people who are going to talk about uh, uh, formulation as satish ji said it's a formulation that was uh, given a lot of space at the time of the covid um, problems and within this is a very interesting and a very very important ayurvedic karma uh, ayurvedic procedure which is nasya and nasya is a very unusual procedure which uh, is routinely used in ayurveda and much of modern medicine does not appreciate uh, the power of this procedure i hope we will learn a little more about this procedure from uh, professor prasad who's an expert and from uh, sudhira we will learn about the formulation and how, the technicalities of this formulation many of us will wonder why is this formulation so special why does it act so effectively for such a large number of conditions and a, a lot of people will look at the herbs very complex formulation it has about 27 ingredients there and um, do we really need all these ingredients so there i will tell us about it but i want to go a little bit into the milk that is used it's a preparation that uses milk and the milk in particular is goat milk and at first one wonders why do you have preparations that use goat milk of which um, there are many many preparations some people say it enhances storage it has several properties my reading and just to get this ball rolling and take the ancient formulation more into the area of research and understanding not only the procedure nasya but also this very special aspect of milk and to do this uh, so uh, harish ji if you'll permit me to share my screen yes and, sir. yes yes please. okay this uh, the reference i want to show is about the use of this goat milk and the fatty acid composition of goat milk and if you can see my screen you will see a reference here on fatty acid profile in goat milk i i don't want to touch on the herbs they're clearly beneficial but i want to touch briefly on that the fatty acid composition yeah and if you look at this this is a paper that was uh, published relatively recently from italy and it starts off by saying goat milk is exciting because it's a functional food so that is one phrase we want to keep in mind and etc but i i want to quickly go down to the fatty acid composition of the the milk and if you look at the fatty acid composition the two major fatty acids you see this 10% here and 26% here the 10% is a fatty acid called capric acid and the one that is even higher in percentage is palmitic acid if you look at both of these so one is at 10% of the total saturated fatty acids and palmitic acid is a 16 carbon uh, fatty acid it uh, has um, the highest concentration 26% it's very unique for goat milk these two fatty acids and both of these fatty acids are immunomodulators so we not only have herbs that are used but we have the use of a milk ayurveda recommends eight different milks as uh, for use in therapy 
And within that, we have goat milk. And within goat milk are two fatty acids that are very special, found in goat milk. Did you and, get both, and both of them are immuno stimulants, uh, immunomodulators, I would say. I won't go into the details here. Uh, a lot of research goes on in both with both these areas in understanding yes, macrophages and I switching of macrophages and all that. Now, this is very important for the area of uh, management of inflammation using Nasia, which we will hear about, but particularly in this area of neuroinflammation. I feel there is a lot that we can learn from Nasia, from Anuthalem, from goat milk, to understand aspects of neuroinflammation. And we know that neuroinflammation right. is central to many aspects of dementia and uh, a lot of uh, other neurodegenerative conditions. So I will leave this here. I think there is some problem connecting with Dr. Bernard Colasso joining from London. Perhaps he will join us a little later in the program. Uh, Harishi, shall we proceed with Sudhira's presentation so that we can, we will wait for. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. We will wait for Dr. Kulasu. So with that brief introduction, so I just repeat what I said earlier, that we have a safe and age old formulation that is used routinely. It, it, everybody uses Anutailam routinely. And we know from thousands of years, if not hundreds of years more recently, that there are no side effects, beneficial effects. And there are herbs in there and herbs, those herbs will have different ingredients. I will leave the herbs aside, but I want to go into the milk and I show you two fatty acids in here. Very, very special. So I leave it here. So uh, Madanji, if I can ask one question. Quickly, please, please. Since we please have... actually... So uh, this is wonderful, which you have pointed out for the goat milk. Uh, my and I'm. It's just a curiosity, uh, curiosity question. That do we have uh, these two fatty acids in uh, cow milk? Yeah. No. No. So you don't cow find... milk does not have this because it that doesn't. is the one very distinct uh, differentiation. Then I would say. Absolutely, uh, and you know, in in the mythology, in Indian mythology, it is said that goat milk is the milk that is used for pacifying rudra when you do rudra abhishegam it is always goat milk that is used wow. and rudra has a very special person in mythology because rudra is the controller of his children and his children are called the maruts and maruts in contemporary maruts when rudra is very angry he releases these maruts who will come and cause damage and our contemporary understanding could well be that maruts are microbes hmm. and they can come down and cause havoc. Well, maruta, maruta is a synonym for vata also. Also, also for vata. So you see, we can start so, to see very, Pallaviji, I, I think. I just want to quickly add, if you see the height of a goat, and if you have seen them grazing in any Indian uh, 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 fields, so they can just reach the thorny shrubs. They eat uh, gokru. Gokru is uh, what we are going to So it has all those thorny and uh, very uh, useful shrubs which it eats. And ajak shar, ajak means goat. Ajak shir and ajak bhut is very, very, has high medicinal value. And it is also used in treating rajakshama. Right. So this, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Madan. Yesterday, Pallaviji, thank you. Thank you for mentioning. What, goats are very special. And maybe Dr. Prasad and uh, Sudhiraji will also add to this. The goat is able to eat very bitter herbs. One of the few animals that can eat vacha is, yeah. uh, is goat. And oh. so the goat has some very special, uh, has some very special, abilities and all of this was observed understood by the ancients and, no, and there one, are many more one, things uh, one just one quick thing and i am absolutely excited to hear all experts opinion but whenever you in ayurveda we use aja or the goat milk it is more for the respiratory products 
and it's more sure. considered as a rukshatwa uh, hmm. you know because it's a respiratory whole area is for kapha correct so that's how that approach has been also taken so we, uh, yeah this is a this is an extremely rich discussion and i uh, uh, harish ji harish ji tells me uh, dr kalasho is here uh, uh, bani okay. You are on mute. Oh. Delighted to have you here with us. And on mute. If, you could, if you could adjust your camera just a little bit so that we can see you, just a little bit. That's perfect. That is perfect. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today from uh, London. Nice, uh, nice, nice to catch up with you guys. And apologies for being late, but um, no, it's very interesting. I was, I was listening to your bit about goat and the fatty acids, but. Um, just from an immunogenic point of view, it's it's clear that goat's milk proteins are different enough from cow's milk proteins for those mm -hmm. persons that may be allergic. So again, manifestations that may come out in the respiratory tract could be altered by you know leaning towards goat products rather than cow-based products. Benny, we are very delighted. Thank you for mentioning this because there is a controversy about the caseins in uh, cow okay. milk particularly yeah. the beta casein, the dominant caseins, and the proteolytic products of the caseins uh, releasing tiny peptides. Benny, uh, you are a person who has had over four, four and a half decades of experience with rheumatology, inflammatory condition, a typical one of the, and you are our guide here today. And thank you so much for being here with us. And the questions that we discussed earlier on was how, you see these little peptides that come out of foods and peptides that come out of microbes, which is what we are talking about, and how they play out in particularly individuals with very severe inflammatory conditions. You know, I'm trying to see if there is something we can learn from you that can then be taken to the world of Ayurveda and discussed with the people in Ayurveda, and then come back to you saying this is what happens in Ayurveda in all of your inflammatory conditions. Thank you. Well, I mean, I, I, I know it's, it's from Ayurveda or, or other remedies that that are presented. The 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 nice but also complex situation we're in today is that a loose comment of multifactorial and polygenetic as an expression of mechanisms of disease in the past over the last, maybe last two decades, has become an absolute reality where medical biologists can chase right down to the gene or um, an entron that's, that's active or inactive. And this whole balance, as we've discussed before, of the, um, um, the disease expression is definitely dominated by the person's genetics. But then the gene, expression is dominated by epigenetic phenomena so that you get this extreme variety of persons and that's why if you involute that i think what i'm learning absolutely learning from your colleagues and networking experience that the ayurvedic approach has always thrown in some aspect of individualized ridiculously personalized form of assessment and then a matched therapy whereas today um, modern um, practices now particularly let's say chasing down the key mechanism of controlling a cancer needs you to get all the way as you say right down to the peptide sequence and see how you can manipulate an inflammatory pathway which is very very complex and involves everything so everything is interconnected and that's it's a reductionist belief. You can say everything's interconnected and then you get away with saying, well, you know, a butterfly takes off in, in China and we get a we, we get a, a storm here in the UK. It is oh. connected and it's not defensible to use that extreme chaos theory for individual patient care. So we, we're now in the observational sort of restriction, let's say, of pharmacological medicine, if I put it that way, and this power of evidence-based and the power of RCT. And it's this balance of 
molecular medicine going down the rabbit hole down to these details and levels of the genome, which is your expertise, and balancing it against this global or stand back approach of looking at the whole person and then identifying a personalized therapy or herbal treatment or decoction that would match that individual for that individual inflammatory pathway. So the, the concepts are the same, really. Benny, I want, to, I want to just stop here. The reason why I'm forcing this question on you is you were, you were at the prestigious Central Middlesex Hospital in London, which is the teaching hospital for the Imperial College, number one. Number two, uh, you have seen how the National Health Service works mm -hmm. and the strengths and the limitations, and you are privileged to be in that hospital, which has a huge history in the area of um, uh, immunology. And it's one of the central institutions around the world. Now for audience here, I just want to highlight that uh, if you, uh, when Bernie's screen is back on, you will see two photographs on the back there. And those two photographs are of old Bombay. You're well, you're well. And is, Bernie's, Bernie, uh, Bernie has a Bombay connection. His right. father was a practitioner in Bindi Bazaar in Bombay. This is either side of, either oh. side of the, the clock tower. This is looking at the oval from both sides now. That's so one side. Oh. That's the other Bernie. side. I, I was, yeah. That's the oval. So I, was, I was trying so hard to figure out those two pictures, you know, when Dr. <laughs> Koleko was talking. I was trying so to Bernie figure out. He has a very strong India connection. He studied medicine at the University of Bristol and has been embedded in that area. The reason why I'm asking all these questions, uh, uh, Bernie, is you know that uh, together with Satish Ji here, the Canada-India Foundation has been instrumental in developing various interactions in, the in Ontario and in Canada. And you also know that William Osler, one of the founding fathers of Johns Hopkins and later Regis Professor of uh, uh, Physics in Oxford, comes from Canada. And perhaps Satish Ji will tell us a little bit about what is happening and how they have helped establish a, 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 a center at the Oslo uh, Center. I think Harish Ji, Harish Ji, uh, Satish Ji, Namaskar. I think Oslo was actually once president of the RSM where we've been together. That's right. So I, I, I guess we'll just hear from Satish Ji a little bit about Right. the work they have done in raising a lot of money for the Osler Foundation. Yes, uh, Namaskar, welcome, uh, Dr. Professor. It was so good to, so fortunate to have you. And it's very exciting as I was listening. Uh, I live in the area of Brampton, which we call a city where William Osler Health System Foundation is a very prominent. And uh, this area is the hub of Indian community, I would say so, because uh, majority of the population, over 50% is of South Asian or Indian origin. So, and we've been uh, through the Canada India Foundation level, we've been always, always advocating that we have to integrate modern medicine with, you know, traditional Ayurveda, uh, naturopathy, um, uh, yoga, all uh, Indian, uh, ancient Indian wisdom. So in 2014-15, we took one initiative and William Osler were founding uh, another hospital. They were in the process of, and we ran a major fundraiser drive. And uh, uh, that when that hospital was built, uh, the first hospital where they specifically dedicated one wing for the naturopathy, that how these uh, you know, ancient wisdom can be integrated with the modern medicine. And in fact, uh, uh, they were asked us to name that hospital. And we suggested Sage Patanjali as a father of yoga, as a, you know, how it can be connected to and keep reminding that uh, we are the product of nature and how we can adopt nature in our preventative good health and well being. So it's very fascinating. And last night also, uh, there was a fundraiser gala 
uh, at uh, every year they do a holy uh, celebration, a fundraiser gala. And I'm very proud to say that within our community last night, it was raised over $15 million. Oh my God. And they are actually in the process of setting up a very big cancer research center here at William Osler. So it is very uh, great to uh, hear the connection. And uh, we're looking forward to having more interaction and more uh, such kind of alliances that uh, our key or core goal of uh, that, how we can inbuilt. And I was very, uh, very, very kind of fascinated to hear that how human uh, you know, body or cellular level, how it works and how modern science looks at, at it and how our Ayurveda look, looks at it, being giving a very specific uniqueness of every, you know, cell and every body. So it is a very uh, fascinating concept, which uh, we are trying to convey to, you know, every uh, Canadian here. And I want to thank uh, Dr. Madanji, Harish ji, uh, all our stalwarts, uh, Ashlesha ji, and all our expert speaker who spend their time and energy on the, on this speaker series. I think uh, generation will take the benefit of it, and I want to sincerely, sincerely th thank each and every one of one of you. Thank you, Satish ji. Thank you so much uh, for telling us about the William Osler Foundation. Osler, of course, is known around the world for that one dominant Canadian physician who changed the entire way how he was the first person to bring bedside teaching in hospitals. It said Osler was the man and he has changed the way in which uh, many aspects of medicine are practiced. In, the, in America, before he came to, the, uh, to take up his position as uh, the Regis Professor in Oxford, William Osler was also considered, his name was Baba Osler. There was a name, a nickname called Baba Osler. And that was because of his fascination for what that then was called Hindu medicine. Mm -hmm. And Osler's work is very special. And I want to thank you for inspiring us by giving us the little story about what happened on Holy, uh, sorry, on the day yesterday on uh, the, uh, and what happens in the Indian community. For those who are viewing us online, before we go to our speakers, uh, I just want to share the screen again, and particularly the uh, a quick screen of William Osler. You can, for those online, if you haven't heard of William Osler, I suggest you read this little bit, the Wikipedia about William Osler and his birth in Canada. And he was uh, born in Bondhead in Ontario, which is where Harish Ji and Satish Ji are old, and hence that uh, uh, reverence for uh, uh, Ontario. Number two, this is the William Osler Health System Foundation. And uh, hearing from Harish Ji about how the community works together and how they have helped uh, provide a huge amount of funding, how the community, the Indian community there has raised a huge amount of funding for this William Osler Health System, and how we are hoping that with the work of the Canada India Foundation, we will reinforce this connection. As uh, Dr. Colasso said, William Osler is known here in Oxford as a very, very important person. And I hope we can bring all of this into the mix to make our initiatives and our wishes for the future stronger. So thank you again. Bernie, please stay with us, listen to our two speakers, and then let us continue our discussion. Welcome, you go ahead. I'm, I'm, thank you, I'm, Bernie, thank you so much. Thank you, for, uh, thank you for being with us here yeah, today. Fine. We will go, we will move on to our first speaker now, uh, Sudhira. Yes, sir. Namaste. The floor is yours. We look forward to learning from you about all those fine details about how you make Anuthalam, how you use Anuthalam, and sure, all those sir. details. Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you for joining us from Cortical. Those who are listening to us online, I just want to say about Cortical a few words. 
cortical is considered the Oxford Cambridge of Ayurveda. Dr. Madan, can you uh, stop, stop sharing the screen. your screen? Stop please. Share. Thank you. There we are. Uh, thank you. Apologies. There we are. Sudhira, the floor is yours. <laughs> okay, sir. Okay. First of all, I would like to uh, thank all the wonderful organizers for giving me such an opportunity to present uh, such a wonderful topic, Anutaila, that is uh, pharmacological effect of Anutaila. I'll be dealing with that. Shall I share the screen? Please, please. Thank you, Sudhira. Are you able to connect, to share your screen? Palaviji, can we help? Apologies, apologies for the delay, but uh, we will have Sudhira's screen. Yeah, I'm trying to connect that. We, we had tested this earlier and everything was fine. So uh, what we, okay, Sudhira so uh, don't worry if it, it, ha it hasn't come up yet. So there is some problem. What we will do, we will wait for your presentation. Uh, in the meanwhile, we will have a chat with Dr. Prasad. So if there okay. is a problem, you might want to log off and log on again. Okay, uh, don't worry, uh, just try logging off and logging on. There, there might be some uh, error in communication. Dr. Prasad. Namaskar ji. Yes, sir. We are delighted <laughs> to have you. Even a problem. My yes, I think, I think every, off the joint every, room well. Everybody anyway, seems to have. If I don't it. have any PPT, it will be very fine. That's fine. It's perfectly fine. We just want to hear from you a little bit about. Uh, uh -huh. We were about, speaking about the goat. Milks are being very specifically used in Ayurveda. Each and every milk has got its own impactiveness. Very specifically, this Aja, as you have real specific fatty acids, as it is called as a Chaga in Sanskrit, the Kashayam Madhuram Shitam Grahi Payo Laguhu Rakta Pitta Tisaragram this is the what Charaka has given description about the goat's milk. He speaks about Kashaya Madhura Rasas, Shita Guna, Grahi as a Guna once again, and Laguta is there. Lagu, Shita, Grahi. And when this is perspective, it is given Rakta Pitta, Atisara, Shaya, Kasa, Jara. Now, when you are going to analyze it with reference to, very specifically one reference comes wherever the Rajekshma is there with reference to... Professor, Professor Prasad, I, I just want to stop you here. There is a problem with the quality of your yeah. connection. So people are complaining, saying we can't hear you clearly. Uh, I will request... Uh, yes. uh, okay. uh, please, please wait for us because what you are saying is very, very important. And we want to understand this clearly about the, the Ayurvedic description of the quality of... Uh, Sudhira, you can stop sharing your screen. It has, it has come on now. Yeah. We want to hear, uh, we, will, we will continue with, um, uh, Sudhira, we will continue with uh, what Dr. Prasad was highlighting about the qualities of goat milk as okay. understood in Ayurveda. Okay. And then okay. we'll just listen, uh, let him complete it, and then we'll come to you, and then we'll come back to Dr. Prasad. Dr. Prasad, please. Uh, 
Yes. Uh, un unmute yourself, Dr. Prasad. Yes, yes, madam. I am unmuted. Yeah. But my connection is very poor because I connected from the mobile. Okay. Let us hope power is going to be on in few minutes. Let us wait and see. Would we, Dr. Prasad, what we are going to do, we will come back where we, you stopped off about the qualities of goat milk as described in Ayurveda. This is very important. Uh, we will continue with Sudhira and then we'll come back to you. Apologies to everybody viewing no, today sure, about, okay. about, about the problems we are having with uh, our Zoom platform and connections from around the world. There is a problem. I can see many of us are having a, a, a delay or some lag in uh, the signal that's coming through. Sudhira, please see if we can come back on, okay, on sir. Your, whether you can share your screen again. And the floor is yours. Oh, that's fine. Is it okay, sir? Perfect. If you put it on to presentation views, then yes. this is another. This is, oh, there we are. Thank you so much. The floor is yours. Okay, sir. Today's my topic of uh, presentation is Anutaila, that is uh, pharmacological effect of Anutaila. We have a lot of oil preparations in the present scenario for treating different conditions. Like uh, Anutaila is one among the best medicine we are doing in day-to-day -day life, we are using in day-to-day -day life. So I'll be dealing with that Anutaila. First, we'll see the therapeutic multiplicity of thyla. That means oils. We are using oils for uh, different conditions, like uh, different conditions in different uh, like uh, forms and all. Like uh, first one is uh, like for uh, Nasi Kalpana, example is Anu thyla. Then for internal administration, like uh, Kshira Bala thyla, we are using. Not only Kshira Bala thyla, other thylas also we are using. Then for uh, Vrana, like we are using wounds and all, we are using Jatiyadi thyla. Then for uh, Pichu, like we are using Danvandaram Thaila, then for Abhyanga, that is for external application, Kotan Chukadi Thaila, like uh, I had mentioned only uh, one or two examples here, we have a lot of oil preparations, uh, like uh, so many preparations are mentioned in Ayurveda, like Thailas. Then for uh, Mukha Kalpana, like we are using Arimeda the Thaila for uh, Gandusha, for gargling, Gandusha and Kabbalah process. Then for Uttaravasti, we are using Sukumara Thaila, that is for uh, gyna conditions mainly. Then for uh, Anuvasanavasti, we are using Sahajaradi Thaila. I just want to say, these are the therapeutic multiplicity of Thaila, that is oils used in Ayurveda. Like for a different purpose, we are using oils. The only the difference is like paka, like uh, preparations, like some make collection of oil what we prepared. That is the difference. For abhyanga, for external application, we are taking in the form of ghara paka. Then for nasya, we are taking mrutu paka, like that. That is uh, Ayurveda says, nasyartam syat mrutu pago madhyamam sarva karmaso abhyangartam garaha proktam. This is the uh, shloka, uh, like. Uh, what we followed. So these all says about the multiplicity, therapeutic multiplicity of thyla. We are using in different, uh, different purpose. Coming to the Anutaila, that uh, Anutaila is prepared by a lot of pharmacies. So many pharmacies are preparing this Anutaila. I think you all had seen the package of Anutaila because uh, normal Thaila we used to get in 200 ml bottle or uh, more than that. But usually Anutaila packaging will be a little bit different because dose is less. We are using very less dose. Mainly used for the Nasya Karma. Anutaila we are using Nasya Karma. So, Anathala is one among the best medicine indicator for Nasi Karma. Other medicines are also mentioned for Nasi Karma, nasal administration, but Anathala is one among the best medicine. The numerous references regarding Anathala are found in Brahatrai as well as in the other text also, like uh, in the case of Nasi Karma. That means other in the sense like uh, we'll get the reference of Anathala in Charaka Samhita, Ashtanga Sangraha, Ashtanga Hridaya, Sushruta Samhita, like a lot of uh, classic says about the this Anutaila, even Sharangadara Samhita, we'll get a lot of references. A Thaila with the same name is mentioned in the classics for Vasti in Vadavyadi, then Parishika in Bhagandhara Chikitsa. 
So in Ashtanga Sangraha, references for Anutaila as well as Anugrita is mentioned. Taila and Grita both are mentioned. Anutaila and Anugrita is also mentioned in Ashtanga Sangraha. The later texts like Sharangadara and Bhava Prakasha specifically mention about this one Anutaila for as a Brahmana Nasya. Nasya, we have lost so many classifications like for uh, uh, Sharangadara Samhita and Bhava Prakasha says like uh, Anutaila comes under Brahmana Nasya. So in classics also we will get lot of references regarding this Anutaila. Little bit difference is the like, regarding the reference. It Charaka says uh, some type of, uh, I mean, some drugs are different. Then Ashtanga says a little bit different. But commonly, whatever the Anutaila we are, I mean, we are getting from the market is Ashtanga based Anutaila. We are getting from the market. Commonly, that Anutaila we are using for the Nasya Karma. Then Ayurveda recommends healthy daily regimes. That is, uh, under Dinacharya, it is mentioned, which every individual should follow on a daily basis. That is, Pratimarsha Nasya. Nasya we can classify in two forms. That is, uh, Marsha Nasya and Pratimarsha Nasya. So, Anutaila comes under Pratimarsha We are commonly using in the form of Pratimarsha Nasya. The person is given a gentle massage, fermentation on forehead and face, followed by the installation of two to four drops of Taila into each nostril. That is a Pratimarsha Nasya protocol. In this regime, nasal drops usage with the Anutaila is mentioned. That under Dinacharya, in that Dinacharya concept, Anutaila is mentioned. The two to four drops of Anutaila daily usage. The reference for Anutaila Nasya is found in the context of Dinacharya. Ashtanga clearly says in Dinacharya, Pratim Anutaila, we can use it in the form of like Pratimarsha Nasya. Daily, two to four drops, we can use it. Uh, yes, uh, like uh, previous uh, um, sir stole, like uh, in during the time of uh, COVID pandemic, Ayurveda immunity boosting measures for self-care, COVID-19. In that, Nasya, gargling, then steam inhalation, yoga, then Ayush Kwata, lot of protocols uh, like uh, suggested under that, in that Nasya is one among them. In that Nasya with the Anutaila is specifically mentioned. It acts as a best immunomodulator. So daily nasal application of two drops of sesame oil or coconut oil or ghee in both the nostrils. Pratimarsha Nasya in the morning and evening, they mention, but under the Nasya heading, they clearly says that Anutaila, like Anutaila, we have to use it. It is advised to use daily, essentially before leaving home and like before sleeping. That is in the case of pandemic, COVID-19, then take one to two drops of Anutaila on the finger and pour it in both the nostrils. Anutaila acts as a physical and a physiological barrier for foreign bodies, microorganisms inside the nostrils or nasal cavity. I'll be dealing with the drugs in detail later, so it will be coming in that. This can act as a preventive layer from the entry and procreation of virus like a biomask when used regularly. So, like whatever the Acharya says in Dinacharya, exactly that we are following nowadays also. Same thing. Almost all the protocol which is present during the time of pandemic COVID-19, Nasya is one among that. So coming to the exact meaning of Anutaila. Anutaila, it is comp it composed of two words, Anu and Taila. That is Anuni Sukshmani Nindriya Srotamse Pravishyaditya Anutaila. That is Vakya Pratibhika reference. That is then Anunam Srotasam Hitamityanu Anutailam. That is Chakrabani reference. Like a minute srotas, it can be penetrated into the minute srotas. As it is good for the Sukshma srotas, it is called Anutaila. Anuni Sukshmani Indriya, like penetrating capacity of Anutaila. Then Sushuddha Chigitsa, Sushuddha clearly says Anubhyas Taila Dravyebhyo Nishpadhyat Aitya Anutaila. Oily materials, minute particles, examples of potentiation. It's a type of Avartana that I'll be dealing with the coming slides like method of preparation. In that we can understand that like uh, it's a type of Avartana process. Anutaila would be the best example of potentiation that is among Ayurvedic drugs that potentiation helps Anutaila to penetrate deepest channels in the body. That is Anushu Thailam Anutailam. Anutaila is named so because of its penetrating capacity up to Anu Indriya. That is minute channels. Because of its penetrating capacity, it enters into the minute channels and clear the strothers and cure the disease. 
This is the reference of Anutaila. Like whatever the Anutaila's Anutaila like product we are getting from the market, that is a reference from Ashtanga Hridaya Nasivithi. Ashtanga Hridaya Sutrasthan Nasivithi. That is, there are 27 drugs are mentioned in that Anutaila. Like uh, actually the Ayurvedic products, the like uh, beautiful thing about this Ayurvedic formulation is uh, we are getting the synergistic action. Like we are getting the action of combined together action, not only for the single drug action, we are getting like 27 drugs we are adding in this Anutaila, 27 drugs plus Tilataila, sesame oil plus God's milk. So action of all these things combinedly we'll get it. We'll see the drugs. Jeevandi Jala Devadharu Jaladam Tok Sevi Gobi Himam Darvi Tok Madhuka Plava Agaru Vari Pundrava Milotpalam Dhavanyo Surabihi Stire Krimiharam Patram Trudi Renugam Kinchalkam Kamalad Bhala Shatagune Divye Ambasi Kwadhayat These all are important in this context Anutailam Taila Drasam Deshagunam Parisheshetena Tailam Pachet Salilena Deshevavaran Page chipeja deshame, sama maja dugdam, like aja aja dugdam, it's God's milk. Nasyam maha gunam shintiano taila metad. This is the reference which is mentioned in Ashtanga Hridaya Sutrasthana, Nasiviti. Total 27 drugs, herbal drugs are 27 in number. Like uh, here it is name I mentioned, that is uh, Jeevandi, then the corresponding botanical name also it's the Jeevandi, Jala, Devadaru, Jalada, Jalada is Musta, Twak. Sevya Gopi, that is uh, Ushira and Shariba, Hima, that is Chandana, then Darvi, Daru Haridra, then Madhuga, like uh, Glyceracea Glabra, then Agaru, then Shatavari, Asparagus Rosimus, then Pundrago, Vilva, Utpalam, Dhavanya means that is Brahati and Kandagari, that is Solanum Indicum and Solanum Cerutaceae, then Surabhihi, Stire, that means Shalaparni and Krishnaparni, then Vidanga, Patra, Truti, Truti is Ela, then Renuka, then Kamala, that is uh, Lotus, then Bala. These are the 27 drugs which is mentioned in the preparation of Anutaila. Plus, like liquid media, what we are using is God's milk, then Tilataila, and water. These are the pharmacological action of Anutaila, drugs mentioned for Anutaila. Each and every drug is having, like uh, if you're seeing, it is, if you're considering all the drugs, like a total combined effect will be Tridosha Haratva property. Here you can see clearly that is uh, Jeevandis, Mathura Rasa, Lekus Nikta Guna, then Shita Virya and Mathura Vipaka, then Dosha Haratva, Dosha Haratva also I have mentioned here. Then Jala is Shita Virya, then Devataru is Ushna Virya, then Musta is Kadu Tikta Kashaya Rasa, then Shita Virya, then Twak is Kadu Tikta Madhura Rasa, then Lagu, Ruksha, Tikshna Guna, then Ushna Virya and Kadu Vibhaga, then Sevya is Tikta Madhura Rasa, then Guru Snigdha Guna, Shita Virya, Madhura Vibhaga, because all this Rasa, Guna, Virya, Vipaga, and Dosha Haratva is important in the case of, based on that, this drug acts. Pharmacological efficacy mainly based on this action of these, I mean, considering all these factors. Then Chandana is like a Tikta Madhura Rasa, Leku Snigdha Guna, Shita Virya, then Katu Vipaka, then Daru Haridra is Tikta Kashaya Rasa, Leku Ruksha Guna, Ushna Virya and Katu Vipaka, then Madhuka, that is Ishti Madhu is Madhura Rasa, Guru Snigdha, Shita Virya and Madhura Vipaka. If, uh, I mean, uh, we can see like a uh, mixed factors like uh, rasa guna virya vibhaga like in the case of virya and uh, ushna virya and shita virya both we can see so combined effect we can expect from anutaila the next is plava then agaru then shatavari then vilva vilva is kashaya tikta rasa then lekhu ruksha guna ushna virya and katu vibhaga then utpala that is uh, utpala is uh, lotus mathura kashaya tikta rasa then Lekhu Snikta Pichila Guna, like uh, Pichila Guna is not mentioned for some other drugs. Then Shita Virya and Mathura Vipaka. Then Brahadi and Kantakari, both are Kadu Tikta and uh, like uh, Kadu Tikta Rasa, Lekhu Ruksha Tikshna Guna, Ushna Virya and Kadu Vipaka. Then Shaliparni and Prishniparni, Mathura Tikta Rasa, Guru Snikta. Shaliparni is Guru Snikta, but Prishniparni is Lekhu Snikta. Then Ushna Virya and Mathura Vipaka. Then Vidangam is Kadu Kashaya Leku, Ruksha, Tikshnaguna, then Ushna Virya and Kadu Vipaga, then Patramis, 
ಕಡು ತಿಕ್ತ ಮಧುರ ರಸ ಲಘು ರೂಕ್ಷ ತೀಕ್ಷ್ಣ ಗುಣ ಉಷ್ಣ ವಿರ್ಯನ್ ಕಡು ವಿಭಾಗ ದೆನ್ ತ್ರುಟಿ ಈಸ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಏಲ ಎಲೈಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಕಡು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮಧುರ ಗುಣ ಮಧುರ ರಸ ಲಘು ರೂಕ್ಷ ಗುಣ ಶೀತ ವೀರ್ಯ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮಧುರ ವಿಭಾಗ ಲೈಕ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಅನಲೈಸಿಂಗ್ ಅನ್ ಆಯುರ್ವೇದಿಕ್ ಫಾರ್ಮುಲೇಷನ್ ಆಯುರ್ವೇದ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಘೃತ ತೈಲ ಅರಿಷ್ಟ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಇಟ್ ಮೇ ಬಿ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಅನಲೈಸ್ ಈಚ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಡ್ರಗ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ದಟ್ ಫಾರ್ಮುಲೇಷನ್ ಈಚ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಡ್ರಗ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ಮಕಾಲಜಿ ಆಫ್ ಈಚ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಡ್ರಗ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ರಸ ಆಫ್ ಡ್ರಗ್ ಗುಣ ಆಫ್ ಡ್ರಗ್ ವೀರ್ಯ ಆಫ್ ಡ್ರಗ್ ವಿಭಾಗ ಆಫ್ ಡ್ರಗ್ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಶುಡ್ ಅನಲೈಸ್ ರಸ ಗುಣ ವೀರ್ಯ ವಿಭಾಗ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಅನಲೈಸ್ ಬೇಸ್ಡ್ ಆನ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ದಿ ದೋಷ ಕರ್ಮಾಸ್ The next is Renuka, Kamala, then Bella. Last drug is Bella. Total 27 drugs. Bella is Mathura Rasam, Lekhu Pichila Snigdha Guna, Shita Virya, Mathura Vipaga. Then God's Milk is Mathura Rasa, Lekhu Guna, Shita Virya and Mathura Vipaga. See, these are the pharmacology of like Rasa Guna, Virya Vipaga and Dosha Karma of all the drugs. Somewhat... ತ್ರಿದೋಷಹರ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ಟಿ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿಸ್ ಅನುದಾಯಿಲ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಡ್ರಗ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಶೀತ ವೀರ್ಯ ಇನ್ ನೇಚರ್ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಡ್ರಗ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಉಷ್ಣ ವೀರ್ಯ ಇನ್ ನೇಚರ್ ದೆನ್ ವಿಭಾಗ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಸಮ್ ಆರ್ ಕಟು ವಿಭಾಗ ಸಮ್ ಆರ್ ಮಧುರ ವಿಭಾಗ ದೆನ್ ಗುಣಾಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಸೊ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಹಾಫ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಡ್ರಗ್ಸ್ ವಾತ ಪಿತ್ತಹರ ದೆನ್ ಹಾಫ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಡ್ರಗ್ಸ್ ವಾತ ಕಫಹರ ಸೊ ಆಲ್ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಪಿತ್ತಹರ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ಟಿ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ದ ಫಾರ್ ಸಮ್ ಡ್ರಗ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ತ್ರಿದೋಷಹರ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ಟಿ ಫಾರ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಅನುತೈಲ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ then coming to ajadugda like ajadugda like already sir told like saturated fatty acids palmitic acid is more than compared to goats like previously we had one discussion over here no like a difference between ajadugda and like goats milk and cows milk compared to cows milk i think like calcium magnesium sodium potassium it is more in this goats milk then according to the ayurvedic point of view ajay dugda is like milk is an emulsion from having cap- capability to dissolve like uh, fat soluble white like, fat soluble as well as water soluble both ingredients we will get from this we can extract to some extent from the drugs that is the preparation of anutaila god's milk is lagu in nature and will not vitiate kapha but it tones the dadus that means brahmana property it enhances the brahmana it won't vitiate kapha but enhances the brahmana nourishing property tones the dadus it also helps to reduce the tikshnata of tilataila which is used for the preparations the main thing is like we have lot of preparations in ayurveda like uh, oil preparation main intention is fat soluble principles and water soluble principles we can extract uh, we can extract that is the main intention of sneha kalpa both because we are using oil as a media or we are using gritta as a media in some other preparations so these all are the secondary preparations in ayurveda swarasa kalka kwata hima and fanda are the fundamental like principles like uh, primary preparations then next is secondary preparations by using prime primary we are if you are preparing anything then that is known as the secondary preparations so sneha kalpana sandhana kalpana fermentative preparations all comes under secondary preparations so the main like uh, important thing regarding this sneha kalpana is we can extract both fat soluble as well as water soluble principles into that media whatever the drugs we are adding we can extract both water soluble and fat soluble principles from that so that is the intention behind this sneha kalpana so here like uh, oil media used is tilataila that is uh, sesame oil contains large quantity of the essential polyunsaturated fatty acids pufa then linoleic acid in the form of glis, uh, triglycerides like tila taila tileshu udbhavam taila if like uh, in any preparations if the taila is not mentioned then we have to use tila taila as the base that is the general concept in ayurveda tileshu udbhavam taila so here it is tila taila is the base tila taila large quantities of essential polyunsaturated fatty acid is present in that this oil generally is safe for the topical use by the us food and drug administration then the topically administered oil is absorbed into the body very easily because for abhyanga purpose we are using lot of oils that is uh, i mean penetration capacity will be more so like physical chemical parameters i'll be dealing with the next slides 
when it is treated with the oil is when it is treated with the other drugs it takes up the property of that drugs also without losing its property it takes up the property of the drugs whatever we are mixing with that mixing in that preparation taila elevates vata at the same time does not aggravate kapha it has tikshna and vyavai guna so it has good capacity to penetrate through the small minute channels in the body so that it will open the obstructed pathways that is a drainage of morbid dosha from the from the shotas so this is the property of uh, tila taila like sesame oil for what, because of that we are using sesame oil as the base for anu taila then in that shloka classic says like a divyambu divyambu means that is varsha jala varsha jala means rain water that is the exact classical reference 27 herbal drugs then uh, dravidravya is liquid media is goat's milk then oil media is uh, tila taila that is sesame oil then other one more liquid that is uh, liquid media is varsha jala varsha jala is gangambu divyambu that means uh, rainy it now nowadays it's not possible but previously in ancient times they used to this varsha jala only it has some properties that is it is the aqueous media to prepare anutaila varsha jala has uh, lagu guna sheetha virya mathura vibhaga and jeevana tarpana buddhi vardhaka properties so overall if you are considering nourishing properties coming to the method of preparation of anutaila like usual method of preparation of sneha kalpana is kalkat chaturguni krityam gridam va taila mevam va chaturgune dreve sadhya tasya matra palonmita that means one part of 1 is to 4 is to 16 that is one part of kalka four parts of oil then 16 parts water that is the general method of preparation of sneha kalpana but this anutaila preparation is little bit different from general method of preparation of sneha sneha kalpana we are not preparing according to that general concept that is in the shloka it clearly says all the 27 drugs it should be in equal quantity we have to take it the drug should be boiled in 100 times so 1 is to 100 ratio 100 times of rain water they says divyambo but it depends because all the seasons we all the season we can't expect this so 1 is to 100 ratio then we have to boil we have to prepare the decoction for First, in that decoction, reduce to one by ten parts. Divide the decoction into ten equal parts. One part of kashaya boiled with one part of taila. Then repeat the process for nine times. Tenth time, along with the decoction and taila, add equal quantity goat's milk. Ajadug the milk quantity should be equal to taila part. Then after attaining the paga, mridu paga, filter the oil. This is the method of preparation what we are following nowadays in almost all the factories. because general method of sneha kalpana is a little bit different from this in this anutaila we i mean whatever the i mean market sample we are getting in that kalka form of the drug is not mentioned here it is only kashaya kashaya and taila processing 10 times it's a type of avartana because same taila with the decoction fresh decoction we are using each time at the last time tenth time we are adding equal part goat's milk in that this is the general method we are following in the factories for example for one uh, for uh, prepare, preparation of 1 liter of anutaila like uh, total 27 drugs suppose if you are taking 30 grams each drug we have to take 120 liter of liters of water then prepare the decoction and reduce to 1 by 10 that is 12 liters from this 12 liter decoction take 1200 ml because divided into 10 equal parts 10 times avartana we have to do so from that we have to take 1200 ml of decoction add equal quantity of taila boiling should be done up to the evaporation of the water and taila is collected the process should be repeated for nine times then fresh kashaya each time fresh kashaya we have to use it taila whatever we used previously same taila repeatedly we have to use it for the preparation then during the 10th time 1200 ml of decoction with the, the equal quantity of taila and then equal quantity of goat milk should be added then do the process after attaining the mrutu bhaga because in anutaila we are using for nasya for nasya nasyartham mrutu like so mrutu bhaga after attaining mrutu bhaga we have to filter it so the, that is the end product this is the method of preparation we are following in almost all the factories then 
I told like uh, it is avartana. Avartana in the sense potentiation. Like uh, uh, like we are using fresh kashaya and uh, processed thaila repeatedly. Ten times we are repeating the process. So avartana helps in requirement of minimum dose. First only I told because uh, anutaila we are using in nasya nasya purpose. Nasya in the sense two to four drops like uh, pratimarsha nasya. So minimum dose. Then more drug absorption. Like uh, we are doing this many times avartana. So drug absorption will be maximum. Maximum. The maximum bioavailability will be the like penetration capacity will be more than quicker the action, then easy drug administration, easy packing and packaging and marketing. Coming to the mode of action of Anudaila, majority of ingredients of Anudaila are having Tiktarasa and Leghuguna. So this product is very much in favor of clearing the Shrothas because Tiktarasa and Leghuguna, penetration capacity. Then Kadu Vipaga, Ushnavirya and Tikshna properties produces Dravigarana, that means Vilena and Chedana of vitiated Kapha because Kapha Vilena and Kapha Chedana. Expulsion of the kapha because of these properties, Katu Vibhaga, Ushnavirya, and Tikshnagona. So, kapha hara in nature because of these properties. Then, next is Madhura Rasa, Shita Virya, and Stigda properties helps to nourish the dados. It acts as a Brahmana Nasya, so the immunomodulatory action will be more, so it nourishes the dados. The medicine is so overall, if you are considering the medicine is Tridoshahara property. Charaka and Vagbada advocates Anutaila Nasya as a line of treatment for Urdu. Jitrugada diseases, usually for Nasya or the Jitrugada disease. Not only for that, Anutaila is specifically mentioned for that. Anutaila is mentioned to have the properties like uh, there are a lot of conditions. Uh, Anutaila is mentioned for that, like uh, Indriya Dhartigara, then Twachyam, Kantyam, Prinanam, then it is indicated in Manyas Thamba, Shira Shula, Hanugraha, then Pinasa, Ardhava Bedaga, then Shira Kamba, Tramas, etc. according to Charaga. Then Anutaila Anut Nasya also have therapeutic uses in diseases like, like Tokrauchya, Skanda Shushkada, Griva Shushkada, then Vaksha Shushkada. There are a lot of diseases mentioned for like Anutaila is indicated in all these conditions. According to Bhav Prakash and Sharangadara, Anutaila Nasya is indicated in Vadarakta, specifically mentioned in Vadarakta also. Overall, it acts as a Brahmana Nasya. So these are the main indications which is mentioned for Anutaila in classics. In that Anutaila sloka reference, it is mentioned like, it is mentioned like, Nasim Mahaguna Mushan Tianutaila method. Like Mahaguna Mushan Tianutaila method. That much conditions mentioned in totally in one word. It strengthens the neck, shoulder, then chest muscles, and improves the capacity of sense organs. That is Indriya Dhardikaram is that. It delays the aging process and reduces hair fall. We can see in some of the, like, uh, uh, some doctors advising this word, delaying the aging process. Because of that, in Dhinacharya, it is specifically mentioned like, as a Pradimarsha Nasya. Then Dosha Karma is, by considering all the pharmacological factors, it is Tridosha Shamana. Like, Dhatu Karma is Dhatu Pushti enhances Brahmana Nasya. Then coming to the Shrodha Karma and goes into the Sukshma Shrodhas and reduces the vitiated doshas because of the Vyavai Vikashi properties, penetration capacity will be more. So it and Anushu, that is, enters into the minute channels, then like reduces the aggravated conditions. Then considering the dushya usually in diseases affecting the rasa, rakta, mamsa, asti, and majja dadus. Then rogamarga, disease affecting all rogamargas. Then aveva karma, mainly for urdha chitragada, then indriya prasadhana. Like uh, if you're considering all these factors, 27 herbal drugs, then uh, god's milk, then tilataila, then water. So if you're considering all these drugs, then Anutaila act as because of its Tikta Rasa and Laguguna, Shrodo Shodhana, because in Ayurveda, Shrodo Shodhana is must. Then Katu Vipaga, Ushnaviriya and Tikshna Guna of some particular drugs, Sukshma Shrodo Gamana, that is Kapha Vilena and Kapha Chedana. So the expulsion of the vitiated Kapha Doshas. Then next is Madhura Rasa and Madhura Vipaga, Shita Viri and Snigda Guna, Vata Pitta Shamana and Brahmana. So overall action is Tridoshahara property.
Tiktarasa, Leku Tiktaguna, Kadu Vipaga, and Ushnavirya. Vilayana and Chedan of Dushtakafa, then Ushnavirya, stimulated reaction will be the drainage of Dushtakafa, then Strodo Shodhana, then removes the Kafa Avarana, like uh, Avarana should be for the treatment purpose, Avarana should be removed, then Strodo should be clear, then Vadana Lomana will be achieved, then Pitta Shamana due to Tiktarasa and Shitavirya. So in total, Tridoshahara. Most of the drug coming to this modern part, like uh, most of the drugs are having antimicrobial, antifungal, antilipidemic, rejuvenative, analgesic, then anti-inflammatory action, antipyretic action, then antioxidant properties of some of the drugs, then antibacterial, anti-helminthic, hepatoprotective action, then anti-diabetic, aphrodisiac property. Like if you're considering each and every 27 drugs, we can see all these some, uh, some, some drugs are having like uh, some properties like this. So I had written here combined, combinedly I had written here. Then by seeing this HPTLs, there are a lot of research works had done regarding this Anutaila, like HPTLC and HPLC study identifies the some of the bioactive chemical compounds which is present in that Anutaila. It clearly shows these type of uh, compounds in marmalosin, then glycerizing, like whatever the drugs, herbal drugs we are adding in that, then bioactive constituents of that herbal drugs we can see in this HPTLC and HPLC, like each active molecules we can see in that. That basically, that mainly based on the, like chromatography is mainly based, uh, I mean, uh, based on the drugs, whatever the drugs we are adding, the constituents of that drugs we can see in that chromatography. Then most favorable season for Anutaila Nasya is Pravar, Sharat Ruto, and Vasharatu, but we are using as a Pratimarsha Nasya. There are a lot of TLC, HPTLC, HPLC, GLC studies for this Anutaila, like uh, for each and every uh, component. Some of the biomarkers are very costly. Then also identified these components are already identified. Then coming to the mode of uh, action of Nasya Karma, like uh, uh, Acharya says, Ashtanga Sangra clearly says, Nasa hi shiraso dwara. So according to Charaka, the drug administered through the nose enters into the, like, uh, uh, this, are, the, this is explained by Charaka. Then coming to Ashtanga Sangraha, like uh, Nasa hi shiraso dwara is mentioned by Ashtanga Sangraha, like drug, drug, drug administered through nose, that is the doorway to shiras, reaches the Sringadaga Marma of the head, which is a Sira Marma and formed by the Siras of Nasa, Chakshu, Kandha and Shrodas. The drug spreads by the same route and eliminates the morbid doshas from the Urdu Jitru and extracts them from the Uttamanga. Charaka says same thing, but somewhat clearly Ashtanga reference. Charaka says the drug administered to the nose enters into the Uttamanga and eliminates the morbid doshas residing there. Ashtanga Sangraha, clear, somewhat clearly, they say. Coming to the physicochemical parameters of Anutaila, like uh, pharmacology, like uh, individual drugs, quantitative analysis we are doing. Same like the physicochemical parameters also, quantitative analysis of Anutaila. This is also like uh, one uh, factor, of, I mean, uh, it also influences the action of Anutaila. Here it is, Anutaila acid value is 9.09, .09, then saponification value is 204.12, then peroxide value is 12.06, then iodine value is 112.05, moisture content is 0 0.09, the heavy metal is less than 5 ppm, then viscosity is 56.3, specific gravity is 0 0.920, refractive index is 1.4800. Each one parameter, physical chemical parameter is having its own significance. Acid value is 9.09 .09 in the sense, like acid value indicates free fatty acids which is present in the preparation. Thaila, like mainly for Sneha Kalpana, Thaila and Grita preparation, peroxide value, acid value, iodine value and saponification value mainly we are seeing. So acid value means free fatty acids, which is present in the preparation. So free fatty acid is more in the sense like uh, there's a chance of rancidity is more in that free fatty acids. Then coming to the saponification value. Saponification value of Anutaila is 204.12. That means saponification value indicates the low molecular weight fat 
fatty acids. If the saponification value is more, then the low molecular fatty acids will be more. That means penetration capacity will be maximum. That means if you are applying externally, like penetration capacity will be more. If you are internally also, penetration will be more. Saponification value is directly proportional to the low molecular weight fatty acids. Then peroxide value, that also indicates the rancidity chances. Then iodine value, iodine value is 112.05. Iodine value is an indicative, indicative for like uh, unsaturated fatty acids. That also indicates the like uh, rancidity chances. Then moisture content is LOD, we are seeing. Then heavy metal, then viscosity is coming to the density part. Then specific gravity is 0 0.920. Always specific gravity of a formula, formulation. We are comparing with the specific gravity of water. If it is more than water or it is less than water, we are comparing with the specific gravity of water. Then coming to the refractive index. Refractive index is mainly based on the bio constraints, like whatever the drugs we are adding in that, like constraints, active principles which are present in the formula. If the refractive index is more in the sense by using refractometer, we are seeing if it is more in the sense, more active principles which are present in that. So for uh, oils and grita preparation, I mean ghee and oil preparation, saponification value, acid value, iodine value, and peroxide value, these are the main physical chemical parameters we are seeing. So just nasal administration like uh, can be used to deliver drugs for either local or systemic effect. Locally action examples for decongestants and allergic treatments. Examples of systematic, syst I mean, systemically active drugs available for migraine drugs, nicotine replacements and hormone treatments, etc. Advantages with the nasal systemic drug delivery. The nasal cavity is covered by a thin mucosa, which is well vascularized. I think uh, this will be, uh, Prasad sir will be saying more about this therapeutic, uh, therapeutic action. Then the molecule can be transferred quickly across the single epithelial cell layer directly to the systemic without first pass hepatic and intestinal metabolism. That is the main advantage of, advantages, uh, I mean, property of uh, nasal systemic drug delivery. The effect is often reached within five minutes. Like nasal administration can therefore be used as an alternative to oral administration, like tablet capsules. If a fast effect is desired, or if the drug is extensively degraded in the gut or liver, this is the main advantage of nasal systemic drug. I mean, drug delivery. So nasal route of drug administration mainly explain in two pathways, that is uh, neurological pathways and diffusion of the drug. In that neurological pathways, it is through the stimulation of olfactory nerves and trigeminal nerves and all. The peripheral olfactory nerves are chemoreceptors in nature. This is connected with the higher centers of brain, that is limbic system. Then these all, the, these all related with the neurological pathways, like uh, hypothalamus, amygdaloidal complex, epi epithalamus, anterior thalamus nucleus of basal ganglia, etc. So the drug administration through nose stimulates the centers of brain and regulates endocrine and nervous system functions. So this is a neurological pathway. One more thing is that that is mainly diffusion of the drug. That is in two ways. Diffusion of the drug that is in aqueous route of transport or a lipoidal route. That means aqueous route of transport is always it is slow and passive route. Then lipoidal root is a transcellular process, lipid-based drugs of low molecular weight, greater affinity for passive absorption through nasal mucosa. This is somewhat uh, like uh, drug, uh, drug delivery system, nasal drug delivery system. So this Anutaila overall Tridoshahara, then Brimhana property, immunomodulatory action, uh, like uh, so under Dinacharya, in that Dinacharya, Acharyas clearly mentioned that Anutella we have to use as a Pratimashanasya, that is two to four drops daily, we can use this Anutella. This is all about my presentation. Thank you. Thank you for patient listening. Dr. Sudhira, uh, Dr. Madan kindly permit me with just one quick question. Please. Uh, when we had a Sudhira, could you before spirit. before please could you stop sharing your screen so that we can also see? Thank okay, you. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you for this wonderful yeah. presentation, Pallavi. Thank you, sir. Doctor Sudhira, when we say uh, uh, Anutail and when we add goat milk, so the physical appearance of the 
uh, anu tel is oily uh, yeah. do you think it should be when you add milk it should look a little milkish uh, it is just about the physical appearance i'm talking about no we are adding milk we are adding a milk in some other oils also chira bella taila we are adding milk then chira shatpala so, grita we are adding milk then anu taila we are adding milk as a media we are using the okay yeah. okay thank you always in mrudu bhaga we are adding milk we, we used to prepare like that while preparing i mean uh, while adding milk at the first stage we won't add milk i mean in the middle of the process we are adding milk uh, sudhira the question is about the color of the preparation you know color. Yeah. the thing i think what when you have used okay before i go into that i, I just want to connect with pallavi ji's question yeah. you have um taken us well beyond a phd level presentation here <laughs> it is uh, you have taken us into aspects of paga mridha park yes. you have touched on two very interesting terms uh pratimarsh versus marsha yes now these are all fine details please let us hear from dr prasad these technicalities this richness of those words what is the difference between pratimarsh versus marsh and several other things that you've touched on that really takes us into the depths of Uh, ayurveda and the specifics then the reason why i highlight this number one about nasya that uh, 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 dr prasad will tell us but also the need for people to understand that the technicalities in preparation of formulations are understood with such exquisite detail within ayurveda and it is a shame that contemporary pharmacologists can only think about isolated chemicals and they are not able to appreciate the fine subtleties of how you do the different paga when you have to use it on the skin versus administration of nasya the paga has to change and there is a logic for this but i will come to that as we come after into the discussion section we are i want to thank you for this wonderful presentation i have enjoyed everything here we will thank listen you, to our senior uh, professor professor prasad prasad ji thank you for being with us thank you for listening so closely to sudhira's presentation from those who don't know about dr sudhira's background her entire phd was on some aspects of that processing Yes. about looking at the paga of a formulation and we have phd level research in india looking at formulations looking at those subtleties of mm -hmm. how you prepare these things sudhira please stay with us we will come back to you prasad ji we lost Thank you when you were describing us about the beauty of goat's milk please let us continue and then take us into the fine details in nasya karma and all the other details keeping in mind that we are limited for time we have given 90 minutes so make it brief but make it how powerful and very have? effective thank you sir how the floor much? is yours how much time i have well be as brief as possible but give us the depths like sudhira okay, has taken us into much. the depths of of ayurveda thank and by shaji kalpana how you make preparations subtleties there you are sir thank you sir thank whatever you, you whatever you are going to offer us will be an offering so we will take whatever you can offer okay i just uh, now because i stopped the reading ayurveda as i started reading more and more ayurveda i started getting more and more doubts even so when harish ji has said about the anutaila this was very common but very uncommon of the practices commonly prescribed but uncommon to make it out even first and foremost as i saw this anutaila once again as a reference to speak today once again i started questions and rather the people started thinking me as a ayurveda critic rather than that of ayurveda explorer i just say first and foremost here the first word is the chaga dugdham 
the milk of the goat. The second is the Varshodakam or the Divyodakam. The third is the procedural part, which is not actually authentically followed by anybody. Now, we come for the first one, uh, Ch Chaga Dugdam. Chaga Dugdam or the goat milk is said, Kashaya Madhram Sitam Grahi Payo Lagu Rakta Pitta Atisara Gram Kshaya Katha Jwarapa. I limit for only these things because what has been said. Excuse me, sir, one minute. What we are, uh, uh, while uh, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Professor Prasad joins us, what we are, for our viewers, what we are hearing here is the depths of the fundamental aspects of Ayurveda and the richness that one can derive when you respect the fundamental principles. And we, uh, uh, when Dr. Prasad comes up, we will hear a little more about the importance of goat milk and why it uh, provides the effects. Secondly, uh, Sudhira, you mentioned about the reason why this thylum is given the name Anu thylum, that it has the ability to penetrate. Yes. With great speed, it can penetrate membranes, yeah. it can penetrate yeah. and go deep into areas and activate uh, physiology and pharmacology. And the question, one question, uh, ah, here is Dr. Prasad. Prasad, Dr. Prasad, please. Sir, sorry for the very, very, very much sorry. And uh, when I see this, the Chaga Dugdham, which is a Kashaya Madhura Chitam, Grahi Payolak, Rakta Pitta Atisargham Kshaya Kata Jwarapan. When we see this, very specifically, the Chaga Dugdham is the, uh, indicated whenever there is immunity is going to be get deteriorated or the, when the cellular activity towards the infection and when the infection sustenance is going to be there at the time the chagadugdam is one of the things very specifically being stated. For the present scenario of the COVID, the goat milk based andutaila is one of the best option to say to get increase the immunity is one of the best thing. Second thing, Chitam Suchi Shivam Rushtam Vimalam Laghu Shadgunam Prakurcha Divyam Udakam. This is what the Varshodaka. And, and the last statement is Brashtam Patram Apetshati. Whenever, whatever the vessel you are going to collect based upon that, they Additives for that of the Varshodaka or Divyodaka is going to be there. That's why they are supposed to be collected in the mud pots or otherwise in the Suvarna Patras. Suvarna Patra is said for the once again immunity. Previously, the people were preparing only for a little quantity, wise. that's why these things were possible. Industrialization is in the it is not possible. I have some of the questions here. There are different uh, Rasa Gona Virya Vipakas of the 27 Dravyas has been made out. When we have made the Kashaya, the Kashaya is going to be residing only heat resistant alkalis. What about the volatile ability or volatile acids which are there in the Chandana, Agaru, Patra, Daru, Haridra, Yeshtimadu, Sushma Yela, Surabhi, Suradaru, Vedanga, Sariba, and Musta? These are having the volatile oils. Does this volatile oils are not at all required for the our present concern of the Anduthaila? And if so, when this many times combusted, 10 times we are combusting the Anduthaila, in the last time we are adding the Dugdham. When we are making 10 times combusted or 10 times heated with, even the heat resistant alkalides are also going to be get vanished. We are speaking those things as a fortification. Can this be made very comfortably to that of the active principles which are being drawn? Like nowadays, many of the herbs are being taken out with the essences 
and ultimately they could be prepared very comfortably. Why we are not following it? Second question is, whenever we are speaking in Ayurvedic terms, the word Yamaka is going to be there where the Taila and Ghrita are going to be get used together. There were no Yamakas were prescribed for the nasal administration. Yamakas are used only for the external skin only, Karapaka. But Mrudupakas are not prepared with the Ghrita and Mrudupakas are prepared with only Taila. Now, when we are having this Yamaka, it can be a better one with the extracts based productivity, where we can use the distilled water instead of the Divyodaka. This is the one of the manufacturing quarry I am having in my mind. The second is, it is being said as a Tridoshagna. What this Tridoshagna actually means is a big question. As the Anutaila usages I see in the practice, whenever the Vata is referred, I was looking at the neural conductivity. Whenever the Pitta is related, it is the neural dynamics or otherwise the neuroenzyme actions against. And whenever the Kapha is there, the integrity of the cellular integrity of the brain, all these three were considered by me when I, I practiced myself. Here, the question of uh, usage. Here, the first sentence in the Charaka it starts Varshe, Varshe, Anutailam, Chakale, Shutrisu Nacharet, Nasya Karma, Yadha Kalam, Yo Yadhoktam Nishevati. Yadha Kalam, Yo Yadhoktam Nishevati. Here, he said three times, but he said Yadha Kalam, Yadhoktam. Yadhoktam Nasya Karma is not a Pratimarsha Nasya Karma. Pratimarsha Nasya Karma is only to be used multiple, multiple times, normal incense with one or two drops. But Anutaila has to be given or administered. That too, they have given Raham once in three days, seven times, seven days only. Seven times, seven days. Each and every time, it is with three days gap. That means but on the every third day, it is going to be done. But daily three times, it has to be do, done on empty stomach as a Rasayana karma to increase the immunity. We are rather liquidating the instruction of the Charaka or the Vaghvata even. And we are giving only the Pratimarshanasya. And we say we want to have the good effect and best effect over the very specifically said Indriya. The Indriyas once again is going to be the Chakshugrana Stokra. The optic and also um, auditory and also from the nasal, the three indriyas which we are getting, they have connection and thereby they are going to make out. Once again, I lose my power here, maybe another couple of minutes yeah. only. But here, one thing I understand is the manyastamba and other things which we are looking forward in Ayurveda, they are of the neural conditions of the Neuroenzymatic reactivity conditions, they are only better to be working with the Andutaila. As per the understanding of the uh, absorption of this, whatever remnant of the alkaloids, when we see this, this remnant alkaloids, which are going to be, as she said, through the diffusion method, and the permeability, and the, when we see the specific gravity is 0 0.9 to 0 where 0 is said to be the water, 0 0.920 means less than that of the water or more than that of the water. The Anutailam, when you say less than that of the water, it is not even like water. When I see, I have seen a tradition in one of the religious community, they wash the nostrils morning noon and evening three times with the water pushing into the nostrils. This is the traditionality for them. It was observed, the people, those who are going to wash the nostrils three times a day with the water, they are going to be very comfortably retaining the immunity as much as. 
they are very strong with the immunity even. And the people of the Ayurveda, which has been said the Anutayala to be used, it has to be used a minimum three times. And one more thing, why the Vyaham, why the three days has been given, 24 into three days, which is that given the neural activity which has to be started and it is to be given only a time of the three days for the absorption. Then only, otherwise it goes waste as such. We are wasting lots of the material instead of making it. When you see the disease listing from the Charaka, Manyastambha, Shirasula, Ardhita, Anusangra, Ardhao, Vedata, Charakkamba. Here the Parkinsonism is being given. Here the cervical problems are being given. Especially they said ear is for the balancing of the human being when it is going to be. That means when we are having, it is acting on the middle ear, but Anutaila is always focused for only for the sinuses. Why so? This I don't understand. When we see this uh, Yamaka, Anutaila Pratdruta, Yamaka is going to be much more better, I feel so. And there is a limitation of the rasa, guna, vidya, vipaka, prabhava, ultimately. Which of the very specific, whether it is acting anutaila on the basis of the rasa? Because the, when it is rasa, rasa has a limitation. Unless it is not undergoing the vipaka, it cannot have any action. So rasa and is not at all going to be discussed here. Guna. This can be acceptable because of the lagu guna, penetrability is there with. Sushma Guna is there, thereby it is good enough. But the drugs which we are using, they are having the Guru Guna. Unless and until they are not going to be get converted into, I hope the conversion is going to take place in the Paka. The Guru Guna is not at all going to be there at the end of the Anutaila. It will be remaining only as a Lagu and Sushma only because of the repeated heating. That could be interpreted with that of the micro or uh, low <clears throat> molecular weight uh, chains. But question is here, the saponification. The saponification 204, whenever there is oil being used, there will be a saponification. Without uh, oil, there will be no saponification. When we use this saponification 204%, do you mean this, this growth like things which are going to be generating bubbles in? When the absorption of this nastya is going to be there, the two methods you have given as one is the diffusion method, madam, and the second is other neurological. Here, very unfortunate thing which has been observed at the, some of the researchers is the neurolemma, neither the nerve is impactive. Neither that of the nerve cover even. In between neurolemma and the nerve, the oil-based particles are going to be get passed, like in the week. This is being given as an example when the natya is being done. As the week is going to suck the oil, the nerve is going to suck the oil in between the nerve and the neurolemma space. We are still more hypothetical rather than that of the very accurate in presentations. Out of these many drugs, which we see the Anutailam, ultimately we can understand for the present scenario, whoever wish to have a longevity and not having a white hair or vali uh, palitam, that is either the falling of the hair or the uh, whitening of the hair, the, those people has to use this nasyam. And secondly, people, those who wish to have a good vision, that means if there is a cataract, can we be anutaila? Not at all. We have the, some of the specific things. Only can the cataract can be prevented with the anutaila? We are not going to choose such sort of the researchers. We choose only a research, Parkinsonism, or otherwise, we do not, even the neuroenzymes are being analyzed. When I see on the material, on the net, nowadays the Google also has uh, making lots of the material to be removed. And these materials which are available are useless materials. The people- Prasadji, I am going to, Prasadji, I'm going to stop you here because you're touching yeah, some I, very, very important here, points. Sir. 
and we are uh, slightly, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, 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 running out of the time. It, we are not just the time, but the, I don't want to lose this quality of discussion. And perhaps we will come together in a separate, uh, in a separate uh, event. That will be fine. We can sir. go into these. And I have to say ultimately thank you and uh, but, for this uh, good please, uh, and discussion. We we wish very much for you to be part of our future discussions, and we will continue on this one very important yeah, part of the details that you are dissecting. You are you have taken us not only to the PhD level, but you are now taking us into the postdoctoral and uh, the the levels where we need an entire institute to start to look at the basis of action of just one formulation. Your comment about the Yamaka preparations, where you have grit plus thylum together, this itself will require hundreds of man years of work to unpack, I would say. But before we go to uh, Professor Colasso, I just want to hear very briefly from Sudhira, we have seen the kind of need for considering many of those details in Charaka Samhita and the fine needs of how we convey this information to the common man. We are routinely saying Anuthailam is prepared this way. A question that came up is, are all manufacturing uh, institutions repeating the, the nine avartanas that you are doing? Is it done routinely? Are there complications? and then going into the finer details. And when we come yes. into certain other aspects, uh, would you like to comment? And after your comments very swiftly, I would just want to share one or two transparencies before we hear from Dr. Kulasu. Okay, sir, uh, here it is. Uh, first question is, uh, can I, uh, I mean, uh, are manufacturing companies repeating the process nine times in India? Yes, sir. It's they are doing it. it's like uh, uh, nine times in the sense like uh, uh, total ten times process nine times then tenth time they are adding God's milk Ajadugda. They are doing the same process. Yeah, I know the companies they are doing the same process here also in cortical also we are doing the same process, repeating the process for ten times, fresh kashaya with the oil and last time ten time they are adding uh, I mean God's milk, repeating the process same. Then the next is, uh, can Anutaila be used for other organs like, uh, that is uh, Mrutupaka oils uh, commonly used for Nasi Karma. So Anutaila we are always uh, filtering in the uh, form of Mrutupaka. So we are commonly used for Nasya, Anutaila for Nasya. Then the uh, thing is, sir, uh, you told about Yamaka, actually Ekasneham, and then Yamakam, Trivrit and Mahasneham, four types of oils are there. Ekasneham only one, then Yamakam is a combination of two, then Trivrit is three, I mean, then Mahasneham is the, that is uh, four. Here it is Yamakam, like, yeah, that's a combination, but uh, I feel Anutaila, okay, uh, Prasad sir told, no, like Yamaka will be uh, having more action for that, so research papers, we'll see for that then next. Thank you. So the, the question here for me, from what I have gathered and from comments that are coming through, is yeah. that the level of today's discussions and presentation is extremely high. We've touched some very, very high levels of detail. And we are delighted that uh, Professor Prasad is here with us and he's pushing us to ask even more clearly whether we are corrupting the knowledge, are we understanding what was implied by the, uh, implied in the text, and these are all open questions. And these questions are the very reason why we are here on this platform. And we need, the, we need to reach into the best of clinicians like uh, uh, Dr. Colasso, who's had four and a half decades of experience. We need to dialogue with them to learn what is it that they see? What are the challenges they have in practice? We need to connect with large research facilities like in Toronto at the University Health Network. And hopefully from all of that, we will get to the next level that uh, we are hoping we can achieve out of this. Now, I have listening to you, I have quickly coined one or two phrases here. And that one phrase that I want to use is neuroanatomo 
immuno, I've put in there the little bit of microbes too, microbiophysiology. Now, anutylum is challenging and informing contemporary clinical practice because it's a very special way of administering Nasia as a procedure. We have shown it's a very safe procedure. And what Dr. Prasad says, that when we go into Parkinson's, you might have to treat it in one way. When we go into some other aspects of the eye, we might have to treat it in a different way. And all those details that are coming through. And I feel using what we have today, the understanding of Nasia, the mechanism of Nasia, and how this can be used to understand so many aspects of that neuronal immune cell interactions. And in many ways, Ayurveda and Nasya Karma and the preparation is ahead of its time. But at the same time, it is trapped in its own knowledge. It needs to find a way to connect with contemporary research, with contemporary clinical practice. And somehow that is the challenge for all of us. Uh, the last comment I want to make before I hand the floor to Professor Kalasu for comments and then to Palaviji is a question that came through, which is the difference between Pratimarsh. It is described differently. If you look at the Sanskrit term Pratimarsha, it sometimes is translated as sneezing versus marsha. So the common, uh, the people who are not up at that technical level will are asking question, can you tell us a little bit about marsha versus pratimarsh? And that is my final question. I leave this slide just here, just to say there are many places where Ayurveda is ahead of contemporary understanding and clinical practice and research and the safety and efficacy of what we've discussed today, how it is used routinely can guide future research. And there are many mentions of uh, neuroinflammation. There are many mentions of um, uh, several conditions. When we look at the text, like what Professor Prasad did, we will find inspiration for future research and developing new clinical practice and advanced clinical practice for the future. Uh, we will listen briefly from uh, Bernie, and then the floor goes back to uh, Palaviji. We are, Palaviji, we, ha we have taken up more than the 90 minutes we had. So I will leave uh, uh, Professor Colasso, Dr. Colasso to be as brief as possible, but Thank you. I, if I may, just first, thank you for inviting me to, to join this panel. And um, for me, it's as a student of the whole um, field, it has been enlightening. And, and as Prof uh, Tangavelu said, I think the presentation was so clear, so valuable for someone like myself. So that, um, there was enough detail in terms of your traditional and historic reasons for practice and, and the individualized mechanisms. I came up against one little issue in terms of having prepared myself with personalized medicine that you very interestingly took us through why the preparation actually is effective in what, and I don't want to be um, um, considered rude by misquoting, but um, with my limited knowledge, but you implied that it was tridosha, so that it could hit three or four different um, types of personalities. You know, it was a it was a broad spectrum agent. Am, am I right? That that the, you, you didn't have it wasn't individualized. Just let's say to a vata group or a kappa group or a, or, a, or a, a pitta group. That this agent was designed so it would encompass a broad spectrum of person so it wasn't individualized medicine for one well let's listen from let's listen from uh, uh sudhira it is a very important question maybe palaviji or uh harishji will also add to this but sudhira ji i, I hope uh the question was clear i don't or from prasadji too uh the question of uh uh, uh, uh 
Yes, sir. What, uh, what uh, Sushil sir has been said, this is very right and it's a very broad spectrum. Not only broad spectrum, it is going to be a, having a very wide range because of the herbs which are being used in it. It acts over the neurological action, neuroenzymatic action, and also even for the cellular action. Apart from what he was expecting from us is, is it is very specific for any individual person or for all person. All the prakritis also to be used. This is very rightly said, very good broad spectrum nasal administration for protecting the health for the future. And it is a prophylactic and also it is a curative simultaneously. That, that's, that's, that, that's very helpful. Um, and the other aspect, which I think you very rightly brought up later in terms of the balance of an active agent can only be expressed, if I got what you were saying properly, can only be expressed if you've got the rest of your patient or, or population treated for their other systems. Otherwise, you're taking one system out of context and it's not that powerful. So you have to treat the whole patient as well as depend on your tailor to, to, to work. So I was getting that picture. And I think that that has a, a great strength in terms of any kind of approach to, to <clears throat> medicine today, whether, you know, pharmacological driven, individualized, personalized, or your tradition of, of you know, two and a half thousand years. And I think again, yeah, Prasad, I was very impressed with your questioning of the detail, <clears throat> but it goes two ways whether the original um, can be improved on or whether if you dilute the original, you get a mess. I understood that and, and, and I respect that. The, exactly. So you mustn't misquote the original, but I always, you know, modern science is always out of date. And this is the big philosophical conflict about the traditional absolute belief in the structure and the mechanism and the teachings. So although they were clearly ahead of their time, what modern medicine won't absorb easily is that they must be frozen in time. You know, so it's not that there's a thing. So the concept of at what level you current experts and values are able to improve individualize and, and, and improve in the system will come up against this issue because you've clearly tried to explain what these old traditional remedies are in terms of modern pharmacological assessments for safety and other reasons. And you, you know what they are. You put them through an HPLC. You know what the active ingredients may be in pharmacologic terms, but you're not willing to drop the elements that are not evident in pharmacological terms, and I don't think you should. But there's questions to be asked is, is there any need for 27 varieties to go in if five are the key powerful ingredients? And again, you you, you talked about the, the, the method and I, I, I saw Prof Prasad was questioning, do you have to go through these nine distillations? Um, is there a different way of preparation. Now that I would hand over to Prof Madan because he, he knows all the games they can play in modern labs. And and my li limited experience of, of ultrasound and sonification and preparation of my cells and stuff comes to mind. And the whole new world now scientifically of nanoparticles all comes to mind. And it's, it's very clear that your old, let's say if it was an old recipe, must have involved some aspect of this microparticulate delivery preparation because the nose we now accept is phenomenal in terms of what it can do with your brain. That opens another question. And, and this is one I, 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 I've discussed with Mother and G before. <clears throat> I'm very happy to accept that a combination of, of, of chemicals, whether of biologic origin or, or synthetic chemical origin, put together have a unique effect. I, I don't mind that. That's fine. 
And yet, when it gets to hit the nose, there are only bits of that are going to be setting off, you know, a variety of neural signals. It won't be the whole conglomerate that attacks one nerve ending, one receptor. The one receptor will be triggered by one aspect of your thalem, which is fine. And it'll, it'll, it'll trigger off, let's say, 25 different receptors. My question is that combination of effects, dose related or volume related, time related, circadian rhythm related, whatever it is, that effect that has, as, as Prof was saying, a neurogenic active biologic effect on the brain once it's accessed it. For me, from then on, it's simply biofeedback. This is the only way I can understand these. Benny, I'm going to stop you here because yeah. we are we are running out of time and we have gone Go past our time. I think uh, with a quick comment from Dr. Prasad, points, please. I just have a couple of points to add, sir. Be the, brief, sir. One, very briefly. First one is the Anutaila effect, which we are looking People are thinking it is only acting in the brain. But if any lung pathology is there, lung pathology is being treated through the respiratory center of the brain. This is the one action which is very specific with the anathaila. The second thing is about the manufacturing, which I want to share is, there is a silver nanoparticle nasal spray of the anathaila is under the research. Thank you, sir. Silver nanoparticle based, Silver nanoparticle based nasal Thank spray you. of Anutaila is under the research. Uh, Prasad, we are we are running, we are short exactly, of time. Balavi is what, there waiting to, to chase us off the floor. And I want to I want to quickly say that there is immense scope for future research. And yes. with uh, with people like yourself, Prasad, and centers like where Sudhira is in uh, Kerala. We can lead the world. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. thank you, Dr. Madan. Uh, before I mention thanks to all, I just want to leave a question. He, at the center of the eyebrow, we have Shankatak Marma. Marma is a vital point where our nerves, um, uh, vessels, arteries, veins, lymphatic system, they all converge and diverge. And that's the point where these Anutil um, uh, plays its role. So this is a question for everybody to go online and search for Marma. So words are not enough for me today to thank everybody. It has been a wonderful session and time runs out. So on behalf of uh, International Ayurvedic League from uh, India, I thank our special guest, uh, Dr. Cecil Kolako, uh, who has spent his valuable comments today uh, with us. Our special expert speakers, uh, Professor K.S.R. Prasad and Dr. Sudhira, thank you so much for the lovely presentation, immense knowledge shared, and many thanks to Canada India Foundation, uh, Mr. Satish Thakkarji. Uh, he's been so instrumental in making these uh, the webinar so functional, Consulate General of India in Toronto, Canada, Canadian College of Ayurveda and Yoga. Thank you very much. Our co co American collaborators, European collaborators, and the Tathastu for being supporting us technically. Uh, European Ayurvedic Association from UK, Association Ayurveda Academy. I thank you very much, American Association of Ayurvedic Professionals. Thanks. Uh, Ayurveda Union of Midwest, Dr. Ashlesha Ji is with us. She is the president. Thank you very much. I would like to thank Y Media and the Pravasi Televisions for supporting us from America. And of course, Dr. Harish Verma Ji, who is the axis behind all this, Dr. Madan Tengavalu, Mr. Satish Thakkar, and Ashlesha Rao all who have been here on the dais thank you very much for your time our viewers thank you and uh, we would like to uh, reconnect on 22nd uh, 30th of uh, april for our 22nd session on goksha radhi google so till then goodbye and namaskar and pranam to all bye bye okay.